Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall back with you from thehealthyamerican.org. Did you know that Elon Musk wants to build his own town in Texas for all of the employees that are working at his companies? Now, in the old days, the company owners built housing for their employees, and sometimes they're called plantations. So I would like to know if you have heard about this, and what do you think he is going to name his town? Friends, let's talk about what Elon Musk has on his plate next. I uncovered some very, very strange and curious things as I was doing my digging on this fellow. You probably know that I am not a fan of Musk. I am actually highly skeptical about what he is doing. Many of you have been telling me that you're happy that he is taking over Twitter. And I think that Elon Musk He's a puppet, all right? He's a puppet put on stage by the puppet masters. The outfits he wears, the comments that he makes. I did have done several videos about him in the past and I didn't like the comments he made about getting jabbed. I certainly didn't like the costume that he wore that he has as his uh, profile picture. I think he's doing that as a way, like a condescending maneuver. He's rubbing your nose in it. He's like being ironic on purpose, but let's, take a look now at this town that he wants to create in Texas. And I have to say the names that you came up with the town that they should be called, you guys were so funny, especially Swiss Chalet. I think Eric came up with a couple in my video yesterday. You think his town should be called Lemmington, right? For the lemmings or Slaveburg. How about that? I also like Stupidburg. And how about Sheepsville? None of those are the names that he is calling his town. I will show you. This actually is a social media posting from a couple of years ago. And I'm going to share my screen again. And we're going to hop right whoop, if my computer will comply. We're going to I have to tell you something, friends. While I was compiling my notes for this video in a Word document, that's what I normally do. I compile all of my notes, the links and so forth that I can share with you so I can keep my ideas in order. And I normally do this in a Word document that I then label and then I can refer to. And then I use that as the basis of my Substack. Please subscribe to my Substack. It's Peggy Hall substack.com. You get a deep dive on many of the topics that I share in my videos. I usually send out one or two of these very lengthy, detailed articles with my analysis on what's going on. And so I use my Word documents as a basis for that. Three times today, as I was preparing my notes and I went to click to add another you know, link or uh, point that I wanted to cover, at the first time it happened, the document disappeared. I clicked on it and it went poof, gone. And I thought, that's so weird. What did I click on? Did I click delete? Normally when I'm going to save a document, and if, even if I click delete, it will say, are you sure you want to delete? Do you want to save this? Do you want to name it? It gives me like two or three chances before it goes away. I thought that's weird. So I pulled up a second Word doc and I'm working on it, working on it, grabbed a, a link that I want to share with you, put it in there, poof, the document went away. All right. This, I think it's because I'm talking about Musk. Uh, that's just me. You know, and I know that they know what's going on in our computers, in our minds. I did a video on that, on, in our cell phones. So I thought that was very strange. Out of all of the topics that I cover, the one that I was doing on Musk that disappeared. So I had to put all of my notes into a, an email document. Hopefully that has remained. Anyhow, let's do this. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to see exactly the name of this snail brook. Now, it's very distasteful to me just because who wants to be called a snail unless, of course, you went to the University of California, Santa Cruz, and the mascot were slugs. I, again, find that very distasteful. But there's something else that I think is at root here. And I want you to tell me if you know the connection between musk and snails, all right? So the name of the town is going to be called Snail Brook. All right, what do you think about the connection between musk and snails? I did a little research to figure out why in the world was he calling this Snail Brook? And Snail Brook is also connected to one of his companies. In fact, let's do this. We'll look at his company first. The distressing and disturbing things that I found out about the boring company. Yes, a play on words. Of course, it's very boring, but also because they tunnel under the ground. So again, it's that sort of snide, condescending, rub your nose in it. I just find it like very like they're 
he's ridiculing people. That's the way that I take it. So let me do this. I'm going to pull up uh, the boring company first, and then we'll finish off by looking at this very strange connection between musk and snails and why I believe this was all done on purpose. And it wasn't just done to be funny or ironic. Okay, here we go. Sharing the screen, going over to boringcompany.com. This is it. And it says the boring company creates safe, fast to dig and low cost transportation utility in freight tunnels. The mission to solve traffic, enable rapid point-to-point -point transportation and transform cities. Yes, they love to transform everything, don't they? Here we go. This is what it looks like. Now, this might be a little difficult to read, but this description also troubled me a lot. Okay, first of all, I don't like the look of this tunnel. It looks like there were a lot of accidents that happened, like it's damaged. Again, it is a blight to my senses. This actually exists, or maybe it's CGI and they tell us it exists. Hey, unless I see something with my own two eyeballs, I don't believe it. So this whole thing could be CGI or it could actually exist. This right here, I don't like looking at it. It is claustrophobic. It's also creating a pyramid shape, which you know is another one of their symbolism, symbols that they like to do. And I certainly don't like how they created this as though it looks like it's already been destroyed and it does not appeal to my senses at all. Here's another thing that doesn't appeal to me. Why tunnels? This is on the Elon Musk boring website. To solve the problem of soul destroying traffic. All right, I'm going to break that down in just a moment. Roads must go 3D. Excuse me, aren't we already 3D? I mean, the whole thing is bizarre, which means either flying cars or tunnels are needed. All right, right away, that is a false dichotomy, only presenting two choices. There are many, 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 many other choices than flying cars or tunnels to deal with traffic. So that is a false dichotomy. What did like a, a um, the, the whole way this was written is gaslighting. Unlike flying cars, tunnels are weatherproof. Well, how do you know? Maybe flying cars can be weatherproof. They are out of sight and they won't fall on your head. Well, they might fall on your head. So let me come off this for a second because it, it's so bizarre to me. I don't care for the phrase soul destroying traffic. He is putting a value on something that we all experience. I don't mind traffic. Perhaps I'd like to sit in traffic. Perhaps many of you like to sit in traffic because you can uh, listen to podcasts on your cell phone. Maybe you like to sit in traffic because then you have an excuse for being late to work. Maybe you like to sit in traffic because you have a companion with you and you have more time with uh, that you can use to talk to the person. Maybe you don't mind traffic because there are fewer accidents. My mom always said that she loved traffic because the cars moved more slowly and she didn't have to worry about people cutting in and out of her at a fast rate of speed. So no, I don't care for somebody telling me what my values are about traffic. And it's certainly not soul destroying. Maybe Elon Musk and his nefarious dealings are soul destroying. Maybe the cocktails are soul destroying. Maybe all of the other transformations that are going on are soul destroy. But no, don't you be telling me, Musk, that my values are the same as yours when it comes to traffic. You might say, it's inconvenient, it takes time, what have you. So I don't care for putting forth that narrative right off the bat. And then the false dichotomy of there are only two solutions to traffic, flying cars and tunnels. Uh, no, any eighth grader that has taken a class in logic will tell you that is a false dichotomy where you are presenting only two extreme choices and neither of which are reasonable in my view here. They might be down the road, but there are many, 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 many other options that could be available, such as building more roads that we can drive on and reducing the number of HOV lanes because that actually discriminates against those of us that only have one person in a car. There are so many other things that we could discover and experiment and learn and explore other than those two options. All right, I digress. Let's talk about his city. So the boring company is outside of Texas. Let me bring you a map here. And I think I had that, uh, okay, shoot. I don't know where that one went. I'm telling you, I'm having some weird things with my computer today. So I will uh, bring that up for you in just a moment.
Okay, let me bring this up for you here. So Elon Musk has two companies in Texas. One is his SpaceX, which is far down near Mexico, near Corpus, south of Corpus Christi. I guess it's Southwest. And this is Bastrop. It's the county of Bastrop, which is outside of Austin. And you know, and I know that Austin is completely woke, not awake, but woke. So anyhow, this is the county of Bastrop. And this is where Musk has reportedly purchased 35,000 acres using other um, buyers as well that he has negotiated with in order to get this land. And I'm saying alleged because I don't have the exact proof, but these are what the news stories are reporting. And you know, I like to go to the direct source, but I could not find anything from Musk himself. So what uh, I want to do is to uh, read to you a little bit of a story that I found on uh, a website called statesman.com and they are reporting. Uh, so this is not the original source because I couldn't find that, but there is a story that was published in the Wall Street Journal. So I'm just gonna bring you some of the facts that have been reported here. So uh, the boring company, actually um, Elon Musk is looking to build out his own town in Bastrop County. And that county has about uh, 200,000 people. The city has, has about 10,000 people, the city of Bastrop, which is the county seat as well. So Musk moved to Texas in 2020. And he has also moved the Boring Company and the SpaceX part of that, because part of it is in Florida as well. And he wants to build out a Texas utopia. That's his word. Those are his words. Along the Colorado River in Bastrop County called, uh, is it Snailville? Snailbrook. Bizarre. Uh, the town will be built on land near two of his companies there. One is the Boring Company, which was founded in California, and it moved its headquarters to Pflugerville in recent years. I want to show you something else about this company. I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm not sharing my screen, but I want to share something else with you about this company, the Boring Company, and some very troubling, disturbing, bizarre, just like, is it, can I say maniacal, diabolical things that are coming out of that company? Very, very weird. All right, I will... Uh, keep reading from the article here. Um, SpaceX, his aerospace company, has been building a $43 million facility with more than 500,000 square feet on a neighboring, neighboring parcel. So he wants to build this city, and he also moved his private foundation to Austin. He wants to create Snail Brook, Texas, so that his employees could live there. He envisions it as living in modular homes. That's another word for trailers. Nothing wrong with trailers, but that's what he would build. That's why I'm saying it's like a plantation. So the plantation owner is the one who owns all of the land and hires the people and then puts them in the worker housing. And in California, you can see a lot of the old workers housing on different large farms. And I'm sure in the South, if you drove through areas that had plantations, you would see where the slaves lived. I'll just put it that way. And so is that what Musk is building? Is he building a new plantation for his slave workers? I'm sure they're going to be paid. So Gapped Bass LLC is an entity associated with the Boring Company, has been buying up hundreds of acres of properties in Bastrop County. The town would sit on Gat Bass land, but if we did a little deeper digging, I'm sure that we would find out, although the LLCs are very easy to kind of hide under uh, layers of names, but I'm sure we would find out that Elon Musk somehow owns Gapped Bass LLC. If anyone wants to do some digging and research and let me know, I would appreciate that. It, it said that the boring company employees would be able to apply for two or three bedroom modular houses that they could rent starting at $800 a month, which is uh, comparable to apparently what the rents are going for in that area. If they leave the job or are fired, they would need to vacate within 30 days. So no one else could live in Snailbrook except for his slaves, I mean, excuse me, his employees. The plans are in line for an application with a wastewater permit as well. The company expects there to be up to 100 employees 
a day to be on site. And there are several warehouses and office buildings, et cetera. There will be a bistro and a cafe, so on and so forth. Some neighbors have raised concerns about the Boring Company's expansion plans. In recent months, banners with a snail, the company's mascot, which I showed you, have been spotted at the site. They say, welcome to Snail Brook. And they also plan to build a private residential compound for Musk at a distance from all of the employees as a separate project. Uh, Musk said that he lives in a tiny home near Brownsville. Maybe he does. Uh, maybe he does. He doesn't. Okay. Uh, it says Snailbrook is not Elon Musk's first Texas city idea. In 2021, he tweeted that he wanted to uh, create the city of Starbase Texas because of the SpaceX operations. And the other thing, let's do this. I want to actually, I'm going to share my screen and we are going to go back to the boring company. And then I'm going to make the weird connection between Musk and the snails if you haven't already done it. Here we go. We're at the boring company. So I wanted to see what the projects were. So what I did, let me just, uh, so I looked under projects, clicked here, and then I looked at this one. I looked at these, here we have them in Las Vegas. And I have, I don't go to Vegas because I don't like to swim in the sea of evil, but perhaps this actually does exist. I don't know. I haven't seen it with my own eyes. Here's what I looked at was the Hawthorne Tunnel. This was of interest to me because it's in California. And I clicked here. It was it says that it was completed in December of 2018. And again, here's this very troubling, dis distracting, I don't care for the look of this at all. And I'm just using this as one example. I will leave the link for you below so you can look further. So here we've got the self-driving car. And I've got to pause for a second because I don't even like looking at this. Look, it's one lane, all right? One lane, claustrophobic, it can take you wherever it wants you to go. You probably are not even driving the car. And what if there was an accident? I, I have to get off this because looking at it is, is claustrophobic. What if there's an accident? What if the car breaks down? How, what about people behind you? I also don't care for the fact that you're not a part of the environment. You don't get to see what's going on. You're just like a lab rat. And I feel sorry for those rats that are in a tunnel being directed where to go. How do you know that you can even get out where you want to get out? It's controlling your movement. It's controlling your mind. It's very oppressive and I don't care for it at all. So that was just one of the projects. Let me show you a couple of more, even dare I say, more disturbing projects. I don't know if these are jokes. If they are, they're in very bad taste. Here we go, sharing my screen again. So under the, we'll go back to the, the home page here. All right, another project is called Proof Rock. Now, I'm not actually even familiar of, I, I think this is all CGI. What say you? I don't know, maybe it's real. It looks like it's computer generated. So it's designed to construct mega infrastructure projects in a matter of weeks instead of years. All right, what was more weird to me is that he's calling it proof rock. Now, maybe it's, it has to do with rocks and moving earth or something, but I thought, what in the world does proof rock really mean? It had a familiar ring to me. So what I did, whoops, let me share my screen again. What I did is I did a little digging and I researched on Google, giggle as my friend calls it, because I wanna see what the world is seeing. And here it is. It's the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. One of the poem's central themes is social anxiety and Prufrock, are you ready? Prufrock believes that he needs to put on a mask in order to fit in. Are you with me? He's calling one of his projects Prufrock and Prufrock is a name that's associated with a poem by T.S. Eliot where the person, Prufrock, is suffering from social anxiety and has to put on the suffocation device, so to speak, you know, a social mask or a different face to show society in order to fit in. I just thought those were very bizarre connections. Am I off base here? Am I reaching too much? All right, let me show you another one of his very, very bizarre projects here. Okay, let's go back to his 
home page. Let me share my screen again. And then we're about to finish up here. So stick with me because at the end, I'm going to show you the most bizarre connection between musk and snails. You may have already put it in a comment below. I haven't had a chance to look yet. So I'm like, what are these other things that he has here? What in the world is flamethrower? So I click on flamethrower and it is a reference to the zombie apocalypse. The rumor that I'm secretly creating a zombie apocalypse to generate demand for flamethrowers is completely false. All right, is this just a joke? It's a, it's a joke in bad taste in my mind. And here's the next one, burnt hair. This, okay, before I go, before, before I go there, it's going to come with a vomit warning and just a warning in general. So I never speak on this channel about the unspeakable, uh, cruelty and acts that are done to children. I just don't talk about it. It's people know about it. It's out there. I don't even want to give it energy. I don't even want to give it attention. So that's not a focus of this channel at all. However, because we're speaking about Musk, I need to show you this product that he has on his website. And I have no idea what it is, but I'm certain that many of you probably do. And it seems like we could connect the clots, so to speak. And determine whether or not this has some kind of symbolism that has to do with the uh, eerie, creepy, nefarious underworld. I'll just put it that way. Here we go. Sharing my screen again, but it'll only be for a moment. Burnt hair. All right. What in the non-spinning world is burnt hair? So clicking here, this is bizarre. What is it and why is it? Burnt hair, the essence of repugnant desire. Excuse me? Excuse me. The flames begin Q2 2023. We're just, that means the second quarter of 2023, which is starting now in April. If you run a company and your all of your finances and projects are divided up into quarters, your taxes and so forth, uh, Q2 starts in April. I'm filming this on March 20th. Just like leaning over a candle at the dinner table, but without all the hard work. Stand out in a crowd, get noticed as you walk through the airport. I'm assuming this is some sort of perfume or, or, or I don't know, is it some sort of magic spell? The essence of repugnant desire, despicable. All right, we'll have to get the eye bleach now to remove that from our vision. I'm showing this to you for those of you that still think Musk is your savior. Let's finish out now about what I've been promising to show you, which is the connection between Musk and snails. I thought it was so weird that he's calling this town Snail Brook. Again, like, are they slow workers? Are they slimy? Do they have a hard shell? What is, what is the connection with Snail Brook? Until I did another uh, little giggle search, and this is what came up. All right, here we go. Again, you may already have known this. I, I might be behind the, the ball here. A common musk turtle. This is a turtle and it's called a musk turtle. And then I found out that musk turtles eat snails. Are you with me, friends? Are you with me? Snails are a big part of a musk turtle's diet. Am I the only one connecting the clots here? Snails are a big part of the musk turtle's diet. And he wants to call his town Snail Brook. I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions. On that happy note, I'm going to wrap up the video. I always want to direct you to my free substack, peggyhall.substack.com. It's linked for you below. I will try to link for you a couple of the other videos I did on Musk as well. The whole name sounds made up to me, all right? Why in the world, even if you were born with the name Musk, would you even keep that name? <laughs> like I, I, would, I would change the name. And it's so close to the word mask, isn't it? <laughs> just saying, just saying. I like to inject, <laughs> inject, I don't like to inject the cocktail. I like to inject a little levity into our uh, presentations here from time to time. All right, friends, signing off always over at thehealthyamerican.org. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. It helps the algorithm when you hit like, when you comment, when you share, and when you re-subscribe in case uh, you know who has uh, taken you down. All right, friends, see you soon in an upcoming video.